grasshopper season and we'd have hundreds and hundreds of grasshoppers in our house just flying everywhere laying on the walls and people would eat those grasshoppers they'd t like take off their wings and then cook them in oil and salt them and then eat them for they're like a dessert so it's lots of grasshoppers there <laughs> and uganda they have the best pineapple i've ever tasted i don't like pineapple here anymore i just spoiled last week i had the first pineapple that i've said i actually enjoyed this pineapple they have the little miniature bananas that are like this size they're really good and then some other bigger bananas they have really really good mango in uganda as well uh oh people will shake your hands and they'll hold your hand while they're talking to you the whole time so you'll shake someone's hand and they'll just hold it there for 10 15 20 seconds and you just they're kind of they're like what's going on here and uh it took a while to get used to that um, but then it was fine. <laughs> Normal weather is hot, really hot. It didn't rain too much, but you could tell when it was raining, it just started getting really windy. Once you felt the wind, you knew you had about five minutes until it started just pouring. And usually it would pour really hard for about five, 10, maybe 15 minutes. I don't think I ever saw it rain for more than an hour straight. And it'd be really, really torrential rain pour and then it'd just disappear. There's a, a great justice system there. It's called the mob justice. And so that keeps major crime down, at least from what I've seen, just because if the public doesn't like what you do, then they'll take matters into their own hands instead of waiting for policemen or government officials to um, punish people. If you get caught stealing, they usually will not treat you kindly. Um, for instance, one of the, on Mother's Day, I had been calling and talking to my parents, and we just saw a guy who walked across the street naked and kind of uh, beaten up, and the bishop said, oh, he looks like he just got stopped caught stealing so they would strip them and beat them and then send them on their way so because of punishments like that i feel like petty crimes people didn't do them often if they thought they were you know they were going to get caught i know it happened because it happened to me i had a couple things stolen and you know other missionaries got stuff stolen but it was pretty safe for, as far as getting attacked there was monkeys in the you know trees so you could feed monkeys and hang out with the monkeys hyenas if you went to the northern parts of uganda there were some game reserves there and some animals would wander off and so you could if you're lucky you could see a giraffe or maybe an elephant or something like that i spent a lot of time in the capital city so i didn't see as much as that but there's a lot of insects lots and lots of mosquitoes uganda is broken up to, into a lot of different tribes and each tribe has a king of their tribe those kings are more just figureheads they don't have a lot i mean there's, there's a president of the country and he has his ruling body so the kings don't have actual say in legislation and stuff like that but they're very respected and so the president will respect them and you know they, they could get ac you know access to the president if they wanted to if they needed to tell him something or talk to him they're you know well respected and taking care of people although they don't have real political power for this the whole country in their domain the president kind of gives them it seemed like gives them way to do what they want i'm not trying to like sound racist but being white in a way made us a target but also because we were foreigners the general public would look out for us because they'd either assume we didn't know what we were doing or or just that you know we're we're not aware of customs and so not that we'd break customs but just there's general respect for foreigners i personally didn't get targeted a lot by like getting jumped or attacked or no knives were pulled on me there was always those random people who just really did not like white people they always associated white people with americans even though there were some you know white people there was a south african and some other people that weren't american but it was always associated white people with Americans. So sometimes we'd just be walking around, people would yell, go back to America, we don't want you here. And then they'd threaten us, but we knew they didn't really. I mean, they, maybe they meant it, but they weren't gonna do anything because there was too many people around who were respectful of us that they couldn't have got away with it. I feel like petty crimes are pretty common, maybe like theft and stuff like that. And there was several riots while I was there. There was a presidential election um, for President Museveni and some people were not excited about him potentially being the president for another term and so there was a lot of rioting the police usually took care of that pretty quickly they just tear gas everybody and lira one of the northern villages of uganda there was a strong anti-american sentiment due to some previous pastors from america that had come and tarnished the american name according to those people so it got a little sketch there i had a kenyan companion who got hit in the face because he was walking with me because i was american people would yell stuff at us and threaten us and you know shove us around but it wasn't like we, ne we never got fully assaulted except for that one time where my companion got hit and the guy was completely drunk out of his mind so he probably wouldn't have done it in a normal state of mind. In Uganda they have three staples. They have rice then something called posho which is corn flour or yeah corn ground up into a flour and then you boil water and you slowly add it kind of like a cream of wheat but until it solidifies into something that looks like mashed potatoes but tastes nothing like it. It's just you know a thick white blob of 
bland and you know tasteless stuff that it's very filling and it's really cheap to make so that's one of their staples but they, you know they'll add, they'll add sauces to it to make it flavorful and then the third main staple is matoke which is um, giant green bananas that they boil and mash and make them kind of into like a paste not not really a paste it's thicker than that so it's not like a spread for bread but it's just mashed potatoes but made out of bananas I guess you could say that's the best best way to, to describe it you could go and buy a plate of rice and beans for 75 cents to a dollar um, depending on how much prices had inflated that day or that week or that year chips and beef or rice and beef or rice and chicken and those were the, that would be like two dollars a plate and they had something called chapatis and rolex chapatis kind of like kind of like a tortilla they mix flour and salt and some oil and then they fry it and um just on a burner or something like that on like metal plate that's over coals and then we would use that as a tortilla so if we'd make beef stew or something or if we'd make hamburger meat um, we'd eat it with that um, just kind of like a burrito or something and then they had something called rolex where they'd fry eggs into a omelet and then they'd put it on top of the chapati and then they rolled up like a breakfast burrito and they'd put eggs and cabbage um, onions tomatoes green peppers stuff like that grasshopper there's cow intestines um you know stuff like that they ate a lot of fish and they'll just dry it out in the sun and then they'll feed it to you or they'll smoke it or fry it um i don't like i don't like fish very much it makes me sick to my stomach so i didn't i don't like the fish and i tried to avoid it but they gave it to me i'd usually eat it <laughs> so for culture when people ask you to eat food you usually you should eat it they'll usually get offended if you don't eat all of it although they understand more so for foreigners that maybe you're not used to their food or you can't eat as much as they expect you to i made a promise whatever someone puts in front of me i'm gonna eat it um and then if i have something that i know makes me sick i'll let them know hey i can't eat this because it makes me sick but typically you always eat whatever they give you they're very very familial they'll drop almost anything to go uh, people will drop anything to go visit their family if their family's sick if their family needs help whatever it is people will visit their family and they love their family a lot something that was kind of a joke is if if you were teaching someone you couldn't find them you'd say oh they probably went to the village uh, just because people would randomly disappear and like and then come back through because oh i was in the village visiting my family you know they'd give no warning it's just oh i was in the village or i went to the village or someone would disappear like hey where's this person oh he went to the village when's he coming back i don't know another joke that missionaries would have is oh yeah i'm coming in five minutes because you know, people would say that, you know, you'd make an appointment with someone for three o'clock and then you'd call them at 2.50 and they just, are you coming? Like, oh yeah, I'll be there in five minutes. And then you'd call them at 3.15. It's like, oh yeah, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Like, but 30 minutes ago, you said you'd be here in five minutes. Like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. And then you'd call them and then, you know, you just, after 30 minutes, they're not there. He's like, okay, I'm giving up. And then you'd call them, oh, sorry, I was coming. And then I stopped coming. <laughs> so I was just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> There's so much culture there. It's it's great. I love it so much. So you really learn to love the people and everything that they do. And